Booking an appointment with a primary care physician has felt virtually impossible for a while now, and it could get even harder in the near future. As of 2020, a third of all PCPs in the state are age 60 and older, and less than a quarter of med school graduates are entering the field. That's led to the field shrinking in size, limiting the amount of care it can provide. So what's causing the problem? What can we do about it? And when will you finally be able to get an appointment? I'm joined by two primary care physicians in the state, Dr. Zoe Tsin, who is based in Newton, and Dr. Barbara Spivak, who's also the president of the Massachusetts Medical Society. Thank you both so much for joining us. Dr. Spivak, your organization reported a quarter of doctors in the state said in, in, in their survey said they plan to leave medicine in the next two years. But the issue is especially acute for primary care physicians, right? Why is that? So I think primary care is one of the more difficult specialties for people. Um, we are expected as primary care doctors to do multiple things. We want to promote wellness. We want very much to promote preventive care, like colonoscopies and mammograms, et cetera. We want to take care of people in their acute illness and then take care of them in chronic illness. And to do all four of the, those things well, you really need a team behind you. And the team is not just someone answering the phone at the front desk or having a good medical assistant to put someone in the room, but it's having potentially a nurse or a care manager or social worker um, to help you with, or, and behavioral health in particular. Um, those issues complicate what we do quite a bit. So to have that team really is important if a primary care doctor is going to deliver the kind of care that they want to deliver, that patients expect. But unfortunately, the payment system doesn't support generally having that kind of a robust team in your office. So the burnout rate is very, very high, and COVID really exacerbated that particularly for the older physicians, many of whom felt they were at risk more than the younger physicians for getting sick with COVID. Mm. So I think what we've seen is that the older physicians are cutting back hours or retiring, not being replaced by the new younger physicians. So a lot of it has to do with the staffing and getting the support to uh, be able to afford that staff. Dr. Sin, has that been your experience? Have you found that to be a challenge? Uh, yes, definitely. I think um, the issue of um, burnout is at different levels, whether it's from our um, practice assistants at the front desk to our medical assistants to our nurses, and then obviously as well the physicians. We all have an overwhelming amount of stuff we have to do every single day. Um, on top of that, you know, um, the, the, uh, the demands just sort of increase exponentially from um, uh, exacerbated by certain things such as drug shortages, um, mm -hmm. patients calling, sending us messages about, I can't find this prescription or that prescription, generic drugs that should be available and readily easy to get at the pharmacy, not available. Mm -hmm. So then we're scrambling, our front desk, our medical assistants, us scrambling to figure out what to do. Uh, for that patient to access the, the medications they need. So it's, it's, it's been uh, sort of one thing on top of another. I think COVID-19 also really exacerbated with the high number of um, messages and uh, phone calls I received from patients, whether it was they were worried they got exposed, they got sick with COVID, now that they have to get vaccinated for COVID, now they have to get boosted for COVID, now they get tested for COVID, now they have to, you know, there's one yeah, thing after another yeah. that we had to learn on the go quickly to help our patients. And we were the, we were at the front of um, helping our patients. When specialists closed down, we were there in our PPE, um, mm -hmm. seeing patients, really trying to protect our staff at the same time, but providing even care through virtual means, such as through telemedicine. Well, is it easier now, though? I mean, the, you don't have quite the same uh, difficulties, the challenges, the PPE that we had early on in the pandemic now. Um, do you hope that perhaps with the pandemic sort of waning, we'll say, uh, that things get easier and maybe uh, not as many doctors decide to leave? Unfortunately, I think it's not. I mean, even this week, I can tell you the messages are only increasing. For example, hmm. there's starting to be a surge again of COVID-19. So I've got yeah. lots of messages from patients getting sick and seeking advice. Now there's COVID boosters out. Now there's an RSV vaccine for adults over 60 potentially to, to get. So inundated with phone calls and messages around these, these uh, 
uh, health things that are just popping up every day. Dr. Spivak, what about pay rates? Uh, do, does this primary care uh, pay as well as other specialties? So I, I've several things to comment on. I think one of the challenges for people coming out of medical school is that they have several hundred thousands or more of loans to pay for medical school, and some of them even have college loans that add on to that. And the salary and benefits for primary care doctors are typically lower than for some of our specialty specialists. Mm -hmm. And so when a someone coming out of school is looking at work-life balance also, you know, the primary care doctor is more likely to have longer hours and need to work six, seven days a week to keep up with everything. So what's, what's the answer? What would make a difference in addressing this problem? Well, I think there are several things. As primary care doctors, we have to shepherd patients through a very complicated system and decreasing some of the administrative burden that is really administrative would really help. Some of the prior authorizations that we have to spend our time doing, we feel as primary care doctors are a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Prior authorizations years ago was meant to be something for very high cost procedures or medicines that they wanted to monitor to control cost. Today, we have to prior auth generic drugs, yeah. asthma medicines and chronic lung disease medicines that are inhalants every year. And that's the change. insurance companies are making these requirements. So the insurance you. companies are adding some administrative burden that we could eliminate. Are there other things that you would like to see that would make a difference and you think would encourage more people to join this field? I mean, I think, um, as Dr. Spivak was uh, saying earlier, we really need a team-based care. So the physician being able to take care of patients who are really complex, but having uh, adequate nursing, a staffing, um, pharmacists to deal with all the prescription issues, including short shortages, prior authorizations, uh, enough mental health clinicians to help us when we're treating patients with depression and anxiety, which has skyrocketed with COVID-19. Is that insurance companies paying more for these services? Is that a government uh, change that could be made? Or how does that happen? I think both. Um, I think insurances are increasingly, um, as well as uh, Mass Health and, and, and Medicare, covering um, these services. But we need more of it. Okay. Um, we serve as not only primary care physicians, but also specialists. I'm someone's cardiologist, rheumatologist, yeah. neurologist, because we also can't get them in to see specialists. So we end up managing all of that. And we really need the support to be able to do all that work, including the team that's behind us doing that work. Okay. There's actually a bill in the state house now that is looking to pay primary care doctors differently. Um, right now, primary care doctors get paid by a fee for service. I see a patient, I get a fee. Mm -hmm. This bill changes that and would pay doctors for the panel of patients that they manage and would give them more money if they had more services really to try to support and build the infrastructure and transform the culture mm -hmm. of primary care. There's a lot more that we could talk about. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today. Uh, really appreciate you being here.